Hi guys, so today I want to talk about something that's both really important and really, really helpful. And this is what allows me to take a long layoff from the guitar and pick it up again like nothing's happened without having to, you know, try and get back in to it. And it's also what allows me to learn how to play anything. As usual, I've got the wonderful Mrs. Higgy joining me. Hi guys. And we're going to dive into this really cool subject. So essentially, I'm going to talk about something which I'm going to call functional capability. In other words, the ability of your hands to perform their functions and to do their job. So when it comes to learning a new sequence on the guitar or a new song solo, new pattern, it might take somebody else, you know, a week or so to get it down, to get comfortable with it before they can start sort of making progress and start working on the tempo and things like that. Um, with me, it might take me an hour, you know, all depending on where, whatever it is I'm learning, however long the section is or, or whatever. And really, how is it possible to be able to pick up something and learn it so quickly whilst other people are spending so long trying to get it into their system? And really, it's all down to the physical elements because the physical capability is already there, in other words. So when I'm learning something new, I'm only having to basically fight one battle, right? Which is the memorization. It's the learning of something. So it's the mental side of things. So it's like a new sequence in F sharp. It's got those notes in it, those finger combinations. So everything is taken up with learning the mental side of things, the memorization, okay? Getting it into my memory so I can go back and replicate it without having to think too hard about what's going on. Other people though, they are, they've got that mental battle to fight. So they're learning the memorization stage, they're trying to remember what note comes next, they're trying to get used to an unfamiliar pattern of notes, an unfamiliar finger position, but they're also fighting another battle, which is the physical battle. So in other words, the physical capability isn't quite there, the ring finger isn't strong enough, the pinky probably isn't strong enough, so the fretting hand is struggling physically. The picking hand might be struggling because the alternate picking isn't quite there. Maybe the alternate picking isn't automatic. Maybe the speed isn't there. So the stamina is really struggling. You know, the hand is not keeping up and things like that. So not only have you got the memorization mental battle going on, you've got the physical battle going on because the physical capability is not there. So that's why so many of you guys are struggling when you're trying to learn licks, when you're trying to learn solos, new songs, you know, you're fighting multiple battles at once. Whereas when you have this functional capability there, you're only having to deal with one thing, which is basically the joy of being able to just go and learn a new lick, right? All you've got to do is just, all oh, right, okay, E, F sharp, G, whatever it is, whatever sequence you're learning, you're just focused on that. You're not having to worry about, can my fretting hand cope? Can my picking hand cope? The thing is, when you've got this functional capability uh, with both of your hands, with your guitar playing, it's never going to go away. You know, no matter what you do, whether you go on holiday or whether, you, you know, you're ill and you can't play guitar for some time, you, you're never going to lose that. You know, it's always going to be with you. And that's why, you know, I'm able to pick up the guitar. I can go to it without having to worry about losing my ability. That's why I'm still going to be playing. And that's why I'm still going to be shredding when I'm 70. Exactly. You know, God willing, nothing happens, but 70, 80 years old, I'll pick this up after having not practiced for five days and it'll still be there. Yes. Yeah, okay, I might be five, 10 beats per minute slower than I was when I was 25, maybe. Maybe not, maybe I'll be faster. Oh, you never know. Who knows, but who cares? But the, the general ability to be able to play the way I play you know, isn't gonna disappear. No. You know, just like, I'm not gonna forget how to walk. Yes. Or pick up a cup. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's, guys, get the functional movements in and it's done with the simple stuff, not done with the complex stuff. So you don't need that massive, exhausting, depressing list of exercises. Yeah, so really, if, if they haven't got that technique um, well and truly established, mm. then it's going to transpose itself and, and, be, and become, you know, really a glaring light that they can't do. Well, yeah, that problem's just going to manifest in everything that they're yeah. trying to learn. You know, if it isn't addressed, it's like that's always going to be 
a thing which is going to be like a, a bottleneck yes or a sticking yes. point so it's like you know going back to what i was saying like making it fundamental like it's such a boring word fundamentals but the thing is the exercises that you need are like the real simple yes like boneheaded simple stuff you know it's the push-up it's the squat it's the pull-up you know these are like functional movements which you can't skip like there's no hiding place but for me i really like that stage because you can always, even if you go beyond that stage, you can always go back to it and give yourself a pat on the back when you're doing it well. Mm. You know, the, the simple, easy steps are the ones that are just going to stay with you forever. Well, the thing, yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of people might want to skip them, but it's like the thing is, if you cannot do these simple exercises, then that's a glaring omission. You've got to ask yourself, well, why can't you do them? That's, yes. If you can't do the simple exercises now, yes. how do you think it's going to go when you get to like that complex string run? Yes. Uh, six string run or whatever it is you yes know. right the, the stuff you need to be able to do is is way more simple than you think it's you know it, it really doesn't need to be like really as elaborate as you think it needs to be like the the way you focus down on a technique and really get it good is by taking away all the unnecessary steps that you don't need all the string crossing that you don't need to be worrying about right now all the position shifting that you don't need to be worrying about right now and then just drilling it down into the basic movements because once you've got those you cannot take it away from you you know even if you have four weeks off of guitar and go on holiday or whatever you pick it up again it's there it's just there and that's how you can learn anything because when you've got that functional capability in your hands you can just go to anything new any new solo and all you're thinking about is oh i've just got to learn the new patterns i've got to memorize the note sequences but physically you can handle it stripping it back to really get into these great techniques yeah. if, if you don't have those first blocks of solid yeah i mean because you know i mean i'll just go on about the fretting hand for a moment that's you know when you've got you know, an index, middle, ring, pinky finger, fourth finger. Some people have a real bug up their ass about me using pinky for some reason. Really? Just, everyone uses the term now. Everybody knows what it means. So I don't understand. It. Oh, I've had it before. I've had people criticizing me as a Brit for using the term pinky. And it's just like, fucking hell, everybody knows what it means now. And if everybody's using the term, I just well use it. And it's only a two syllable word instead of saying little finger, which is four syllables and two words. So. So, so most people like to say little finger rather than pinky? No, I wouldn't say most people do. I would say more people are using the term pinky these days, but you do get a few pedants out there who just... Really? <laughs> who have mentioned it in the past, like, why are you using the term pinky? You're not American. It's like, dude, it's two syllables. It's easy. Everybody knows what it means. Everybody uses it. And a shit ton of people who watch my videos are American. So well, I'm just going to say... Get back in your box. People are just word racists, though, aren't they? <laughs> word racists, yeah. Word racism. <laughs> Yeah, you heard it first. You're a word racist. Do it. <laughs> um, but anyway, you've got these fingers, right? And look, if they can do a hammer and a pull-off well yeah. and do it in time, mm. that's control. Yes. Right? The more control you have over these fingers, that applies to every single thing you do on the guitar. Yeah. All right? The l less control you have mm. over that, that's going to manifest itself in everything you do from chord changing yeah. to bending just any sort of pattern or movement you do with that hand yes it's like anything you know the fitter it is the better it is yeah and you can go to it and learn bloody anything yeah all right the only thing that's going to change is the patterns all right but you know you've got the hand that can do the job and then the same with this yeah all right now there's a lot more going on with this hand there's a lot more potential uh, potential techniques involved but yeah. generally speaking, if you can get a good motion, which you can use for picking, and if you have a reliable hand position, which remains pretty robust, you can go to it day after day. Again, that's such a great place to be starting from. So again, no matter what you're learning, I'm not having to think to myself, or you're not having to think to yourself, oh shit, I must remember, it's an up followed by a down, followed by an up, followed by a down. You know, you're not having to yes. teach yourself how to alternate pick in the moment. Yeah. You're not having to teach yourself how to pick across a string and time it with the sync of the fretting hand, you know? Yeah. If it's capable, if they're capable with fundamental things, and it only takes fundamental, really simple exercises to get them good, yeah. you can learn pretty much anything. And yeah, sure, 
when you learn something new, if it's more complex, yeah, it's going to be more of a challenge. Yes. Uh, maybe the tempo is really fast, right? Maybe it's just really complex, there's loads going on. But you've still got the physical elements to be able to do these things. Exactly. And I mean, and, and, and that's, you know, isolate and reduce, isn't it? Well, yeah, isolate the, the problem area, reduce the amount of notes. Yeah, I mean, that's... That... Learn the bit that's, that, that's hard. You know, and I'll just point out that obviously this stuff applies to any of you guitar players who don't really yet have that functional capability in both hands so that it's reliable enough for you to be able to just pretty much go and learn anything new and learn anything which is difficult. Um, if you are already someone who's pretty advanced as a guitar player, then obviously what you go to, if you learn something advanced, yeah, sure, go and learn a string spanning legato run. Yeah, learn a, a complex picking run, fine, if you're at that level. Yes. Right? But before you get to that level, don't teach yourself how to alternate pick or get a decent picking technique by doing a, a three octave run yeah. that crosses multiple strings. You know, don't try to teach yourself legato by doing, again, a string spanning sequence with loads of different weird combinations, which you're probably never going to use. In, in your guitar playing in the exactly. first place, yeah. You'd be surprised. Like, everything I have done on the guitar, the reason I'm able to do what I do is I've distilled everything down and I know what movements I needed. That's what you need. You don't need to make it more complex. Yeah. You know, when you're ready for complexity, go there. Yes. When you're ready. But to get to that point, you don't want complexity. That's, that's, that's just basically putting a big 10 ton sack of shit on your shoulders and saying, deal with it. You know, I mean, that's, you're not ready. that's exactly why, you know, the badass courses that you do, insert plug now, um, mm -hmm. is more about simplicity than adding, you know, a plethora of licks to wade through and blow your mind off. Think about it. Why would you make something more difficult? Yes, exactly. You know, problems, life problems are not solved by making them really difficult, are they? They're no. solved by getting your ducks in a row, making things simple. Yes. And then getting through the problem. I mean, that's everything. Everything I've ever done. Like, guys, if you've got my free warm-up course, the free maiden course, the Tao, all that stuff, you'll see the principles. Everything I talk about is, well, everything I talk about in my videos is everything I do. Like, you're basically getting to hear my journey. This is how I do it. Yes, exactly. So if you Everything, want to be able to play at that level, then well, yeah, all this, you have this, to do is that. This is what I do. You know, I, don't, I didn't do the eight-hour practice sessions. I didn't do the massive laundry list of licks. You know, I just I wouldn't deal with that shit. No. And, you know, and if any of you are overwhelmed and you're fed up with all that complexity and, and you think that you need to do, like, 50 licks and that they all have to tackle every single different possible combination of lick that you might ever find in your guitar journey ever i've got good news you know you don't need to do that you just need to get the basic functional movements sorted which are going to be used in pretty much every lick combination that you'll encounter on the guitar anyway anyway i want to say some hey. some major thanks to all the guys for all your comments thank you very much absolutely read all of them and Especially to, there's a few people which better read the names out because... I've got them out. right here. Right, I won't be able to pronounce me. them. Um, for the uh, super thanks, thank you, Superly. Yeah, very much. So, super thanks. I want to say thank you to I'm Your Huckleberry 7189. You rock. Thank you as well to Neil Werner. And I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly, the German way, rather than the westernized way. If it's Neil Werner, I apologise, but I assumed it was the German way. And, of course... Thank you to Francisco Pimenta. Yay. So, Francisco, you rock, man. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, and, and, awesome. and huge hugs. I'm planting, well, I will be planting about three to 500 trees. So that's it. You guys all get a tree named after you now. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> so, Why not? so thank you very much. And I do have a question for you. I don't know if Ben's ready for that now. I'm ready for a question. Yeah. I wanted to know um, if you are or um, which did you um, technique wise struggle with the most so if Good you're question. struggling with it now or in the past which one did you struggle with the most because I'm interested that's a great question yeah okay guys so thanks for watching and like and subscribe the video it helps it get shown to more guitar players like you all right because I don't want you to miss this stuff this is really helpful
And don't forget to answer my question. Yeah, answer Mrs. Higgy's question below because that's important. Right, that's all for now and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.